What a year. 2020 and 2021 have had their challenges, even with fishing put aside. With COVID-19 dominating everyone's lives in so many ways, having time on the bank for anglers has been more needed than ever. Taking in nature, the surroundings, the wildlife, maybe just even enjoying an ice cold drink while relaxing in the early evening sun. This entry into my video diary is to recap my last year on my Syndicate Lake. With a slow start to 2020, still trying to figure out the tactics I wanted to use this season. Swim by swim I started finding areas of interest and where best to present bait and rigs. As time went on and captures increased, so did my confidence in what I was doing. Watching the water, learning where these beautiful creatures are and where they tend to visit on their routes around this stunning 26 acre lake. Now a year down the line from when I started this video diary and after catching a large amount of the lake's residents, I can recap now on the ups and downs of my time here. From sessions where I left to go home on cloud nine to sessions that broke me and made me doubt my own angling decisions. I wish I was able to capture more footage of my sessions, but due to moving so frequently I could not always film the things that I should have. The joys of catching mega carp like this mirror nudging 40 pound are just part of the love of carp fishing. The lake can be extremely weedy, especially during the warmer months. And due to the old and sought after fish that swim here, it can also get pretty busy at times, as obviously other members also want to catch these gems. So most sessions will involve being on my toes with a barrow and moving on any chance of getting where these fish are showing. Bait boats are also heavy in use here, and although some would disagree, the fish have definitely become adapted to this style of fishing. So hopefully this video will relive my campaign here over the last 12 plus months and not just the captures achieved but also an insight into the rigs that I've used, the baiting strategy which done a complete u-turn and also paint a picture of just what a stunning lake this is and what a pleasure it's been to spend my time here. And catching incredible carp aside, also having the chance to meet some amazing friends along the way. Well, we're well into June now, and summer's finally here. Now this entry into my channel is to recap the last year of Syndicate Diaries. First, I want to apologise to all of my subscribers that have taken the time to follow me and my videos over the last 12 plus months. You guys that took the time out to watch and follow my sessions, I'm really grateful that you did. Now there's a mixed bag of reasons for the lack of videos. Now it's easy just to blame COVID and say, oh yeah, COVID, I couldn't do them. But it's, it's a bit more than that. It was a big part of it, COVID coming in, but also work. A um, few things over the lake that I didn't really want to go fishing and put me off. And spending time with my little girl, obviously, is a big important thing. Um, so, yeah, and then COVID, um, lockdown, pandemic, November time came. And then, obviously, we couldn't do nights anymore. So it became day sessions. And then once that happened, it was like, well, filming a day session and moving, you sort of don't really get too much time to set the camera up and film everything you need to film to do a vlog. So it, it became too much of a pain, really. As you know yourself as an angler, on a day session, you're there. By the time you set up and everything's done, you pretty much feel it was like you're coming home again. So, yeah, not, not ideal on a day session. So it was pretty much day sessions was taking pictures and a little bit of film with a carp and that was it. Not really too much time for scenic shots and, and rig shots and everything else that goes with it. Um, so yeah, now here we are and it's been, it's been 12 months plus. It's been a bit more than that, but I'm going to cover everything that I can sort of fit into this video to go through the amount of fish that I've actually caught at the lake. 
So it's, it's been a blinding year for me and I'm really, really chuffed with where it's gone. Now, early in the season last year, when I started, I was putting in loads of bait, loads and loads of bait. I mean, I was doing 15 kilos a session on a 48 and I kept thinking, oh, what's going on? I'm, I'm not really catching. So I don't really know what I can do anymore because I had this plan in my head. I was like, I've got a bait, I've got a bait, get that bait in. And it didn't work. <laughs> it caught me the odd fish. Um, the fish just didn't accept big beds of bait. So I was also on a different bait when I started early in the season. I was using uh, Monster Reds from Baitworks. And yeah, it caught me a bit. And I'm not gonna, it's not nothing to do with the actual bait. We know Monster Reds is a great bait. It catches fish all round. Um, I just don't think that the meal fish were too tuned into it. So as we, moved on through the season i decided to change now i went on to baitworks Creamino. it was a bit of a punt i thought it's new it seems to be doing all right from what it has already and to be honest anything that baitworks mark bryant does you can pretty much put faith in the guy knows what he's doing on bait and it's just brilliant stuff really it's fish food it's not it's not just the catchy flavor it's good for the fish it's sustainable it's brilliant for it so yeah, Cremino became my bait of choice. Now, I'm not gonna say it was instant. It weren't like an instant coffee, you stick it in and it's done, nothing like that. It was, uh, I started introducing it and gradually became more and more apparent that these fish were enjoying that bait. I mean, there was points where I was putting it out and the fish would tail up over the top. You could, you could see the commotion going on underneath the surface. So, doing this, I started getting lighter with the bait. Rather than going in and chucking in 15, 20 kilos of bait for a session, which all it done really in favour of that was I'd put the bait out, I'd fish over it for a couple of days, and then matey comes along a few days later, and he'd be scoring over the top of it. So, yeah, we, I whittled it down. I decided, right, let's try the light bait approach. I'm talking a light scattering and then fishing uh, wafter rigs over the top, finding clear holds in the weed. So once this was all building up, I started noticing, hold on, yeah, this is definitely better, better reaction. Anyway, I'm babbling on now, but I'm gonna take you back into the first part of last year when I was fishing, uh, just as we're coming into spring. It was after the lake had just reopened after the first lockdown. And that was pretty much when I made the change. And we're gonna start there and talk you through some of the captures early. And hopefully I can start to build you a bit of a picture on just what I've experienced on my syndicate diaries for the last year. Now we'll catch up soon. Cheers guys. It's mid-May 2020 and lockdown restrictions have finally lifted. Spring was well on the way, so I decided to get down the lake and start my campaign. Using the big bait approach, I did manage to catch a few fish, but it wasn't really the numbers that I thought I should be catching. So I decided to turn it around, and when I did, things definitely changed. Changing to a lighter baiting approach and keeping the disturbance on the water to a minimum. Also, being ready to move at any given time and making sure to always watch the water. got a little bit of a chunk in the landing net. It's just come up early morning. I've got a screamer and this one's led me a battle all over the place. But we've got a chunk in there. Nine. 
um, fell to Baitworks Evans over a bed of Cremino. It's a chunky fish. I've been waiting forever to get one like this out of here. So, we'll get her back. Cheers, my love. Thank you. Becoming very apparent now that the new tactics were clearly working and after having four wonderful carp, I headed back down to the lake a couple of weeks later to have a 10 fish haul in 24 hours. £21.6 What a lovely comment. Right, so that was May and June. Now as you may notice there, you can really see the captures starting to increase. So I was growing more and more faith in the tactics I was using. So changing from the giant beds of bait and really filling it in to a light scatter of bait but put in the right place with accuracy. Uh, also, using the wafter rigs, uh, it became 90% of my angling approach. And uh, I did use pop-up rigs, but not to the success that the wafter rig presentation was giving me. And the biggest overall thing, definitely the mobile approach. So, starting off in a swim, setting up and just, if I'm hearing something or seeing something up the lake, I'm on it, I'm off, that's it, and everything's getting packed down and I'm setting up in a new swim. Now this would happen some sessions four to five times. And then once you're on them, that's it, you don't need to move anymore because you're doing what you've what you set out to do. So I think when you obviously I watch all the videos just like everyone else on YouTube, and it's very true that as you keep watching and you see these anglers that tend to move around and keep on their toes, they catch a hell of a lot more fish. So I started going, I need to do this, I need to move, I need to get on the fish every given moment. So it was definitely paying off for me. And uh, over the next few months, it really, really becomes apparent that I've worked out what I need to do here. And now I can start really getting among some of the fish that I've been trying to get. So, yeah, we're going to look in, into July now uh, and into August, September and show you some of the amazing captures that I managed to get over these few months. Cheers, guys. Enjoy. With spawning out of the way, it was time to get back down the lake and see if we can get on some fish. After missing my favourite time of year due to the first lockdown, I was ready and raring to go. Moving with the barra was definitely the way for me to be able to manoeuvre around the lake quickly and easily and if there was any chance of getting on some fish that I weren't in front of then this would enable me to do so. And it weren't long until I was into one of the characters of the lake, a sought after common by the name of Janice at 32 pounds and 7 ounces, what a creature. The following week I had a 5 fish hit on a 24 hour session with the biggest being £25. But what was in store for me on my next session is nothing short of a dream. Now it looks to me like it's a fish called Janice. <laughs> which if you watch my vlogs you would have seen I had a little while ago um, so yeah it does look like I've had her again might not be there's a couple who look similar but yeah you can't not be happy with that she is a stunner absolutely beautiful 30 pan and one ounce so it's literally just a 30 but two 30s I've only been here a day, but 
we're just coming in tonight. So this uh, fell to the middle of the road. What a pack of fish. <laughs> he's an old scarred warrior and he's the marshal. And uh, this is one of the fish that I wanted. And it's an absolute chunk. Thank you very much, Mr. Marshall. Well, just had this one this morning. A fish called Starburst. And it goes 42 pound on the nose. What a cracking fish. She's heavy. <laughs> Absolute star. Thank you for visiting me, darling. Good one up the top. There you go. Yeah. This one, 2312. Um, Late work's doing the business. It's absolutely mental. So, it's a cracking little common. It's the fourth one I had this morning. Um, actually, it was one of the first, but we had to get them all out together. Um, right, everyone. Well, this is a fish known as the old lady. She's a proper old warrior. So, I'm not going to keep her too long. These old fish need to be treated with respect. We've had a long, long time. Well, just had this one at £24.1. Beautifully scaled mirror. This is absolutely mental decision. This mega common is a fish known as the Deputy, which is also a dead ringer for the bigger one we had earlier called the Marshall. This one going £32. Well, this morning on the last day, we just had this 25 3 mirror. What a little stunner. I ended the session with a nice 38 pound six mirror known as CC and a mid 20 common. Absolutely stunning dark fish. Well, that's not a bad way to start the uh, 
this morning. A little 23 pound and uh, one common, 23 one common. So, hello little fella. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this fell out to the right rod. Um, just fishing on a little clear area between the reef. So yeah, happy days. Just bent this one. Uh, 27 pound. Common, 7 in the morning. So nice start to the day. Still got a few hours left. So there's always a chance of another fish. That's a chunk. This thing is a brute. I'm not even joking. It's, it's massive. Look at that. Oh, mate, what a fish. 38.6. Oh, An absolute monster. You are a cracker, mate. An absolute cracker. <laughs> this thing just does you pull them. I could not be any more happy than what he was just presented. What a cracking fish. Now well into autumn and the elements have completely changed. Everything's got colder and everything's got wetter. Maintaining the same angling approach I've adopted all season, I set off on my routes around the lake, watching the water, looking for showing fish, checking spots through different swims and making sure that the spots I know are still there. The light baiting approach clearly still the way to go as I slip my net under this 26 pound frame mirror known as 4 out of 5 plates. What an absolutely prehistoric looking creature and was more than welcome. With nights drawing in earlier and earlier it was more important than ever to make sure I do all my groundwork during the day, making sure I was always on fish like this 28 pound 4 common. Well, we've just had this monster come in. 34.5. So I am well made up. Can't really beat that, can you? The next session was a bit of a social with a good friend of mine, Sean. And although conditions were harsh and against us, we still managed to nick a fish each. Fishing completely different tactics and we still both got the end result. Well, just add this one on first light. This is coming up. 
It's a 28 four pound common. What a lovely fish, eh? <laughs> well chuffed with that. Say, not bad for a morning run. It's been rough, we've had some mega winds. Like mega, mega winds and we've had some crazy rain last night. So, the weather ain't been absolutely amazing. But we've managed one now, so that all goes away. <laughs> well, so that's autumn and uh, had a few. Nothing, nothing sort of major. I won't haul in for the autumn period like I'd like to. But um, got into November and I managed to have a couple out. I wish I'd done some more times, to be honest, because I didn't do too much time in November. Because especially once the end of November came and we all got stuck in lockdown again. Uh, hindsight's an amazing thing, but yeah, I wish I'd done some more time. But I did manage uh, two to three fish early November and then didn't go for the whole middle part and then Boris gave us the news in the end of November that we was uh, locking down and that was it pretty much done for me for the winter period um, I didn't do the days I weren't feeling it at the time and then December is family time anyway for me so I spent as much as I could doing activities as we do and then we got round to March was the next time I actually went fishing and I'd done a few days and they they went absolutely amazing to be honest better than I thought they were gonna and uh, I wish I'd done some more <laughs> but yeah uh, so we'll go over we'll have a look at them fish that I caught and how we caught them and uh, the next will bring us up to more recent times once nights were allowed again and then things just got even better and it was really nice to know that the stars had aligned for me and uh, I was off to a flyer. So yeah, that's enough for me. Let's go over and have a look at them lovely fish. Cheers guys, bye. The early winter period is a favorite time of year of mine, being where the fish are catchable and at big weights. But this winter was gonna be different to others with the lockdown coming in but I did manage to sneak a few out before this came into play with this 30 pound mirror being the biggest one I also managed this low 20 fully scaled mirror what an awesome car This amazing carp is known as the Stunner and it's one of the fish that I wanted and at £39.8 ounces, what a creature! Shortly after celebrating my capture of the Stunner came this absolute beautiful mirror by the name of One Lump at £35.6 ounces. When the UK lockdown finally came to an end, I managed to get down the lake for 24 hours and on an overnight session only 7 fish to 27 pound. Unfortunately I managed to lose the footage, so all I have are these photos which I sent to my phone. April was now fully in swing, so I headed down the lake for a 48 hour session. On arrival I started at the top end, and there was clearly fish there, but so was the weed. After spending about 10 hours looking around for a safe place to put the rigs, I finally gave up and moved. Then I moved again, and then I moved again, and after finally 4 moves I managed to get what I was looking for. This mega mirror carp at £33.10 called the Bang On was the first one to grace my net. Followed by this awesome £27 common about 10 minutes after. Already floating on cloud 9, I didn't know what was to come. 
and then I had this 37 pound Miracle and I need to go fish. Water based. Shortly after recasting, the middle rod melted into action, resulting in this small mirror. But what was going to happen in the morning was very special, very special indeed. This ridiculously dark mirror is known as the pretty one, and at £40 2 ounces, I was absolutely over the moon. What an absolute creature. All the blank trips and all the hard trips all don't matter anymore, it all goes away when you're looking at something like this right in front of your eyes. As I headed out on my next trip, I went out with pretty low expectations, thinking there's no way I was going to top my last session. But it turned out that this session was also going to be a mega one. This prehistoric looking common at just under £27, what an absolute corker. followed by this just as stunning smaller common. The next to grace my landing net was this 30 pound mirror, an absolute corking fish and it wasn't long until I was into another one and it happened to be a recapture of a fish that I had not so long ago called 4 out of 5 plates and it's an absolute gem so I really don't mind catching this one twice Another awesome session over and more memories made I decided to leave it a couple of weeks before heading back down but when I did head out, there was a total change in the weather. And what we were to endure was some mega, mega winds and some brutal rain. But it's just made for an amazing trip. On arrival at the lake, I first set up swim in the middle section. But watching the vicious warm winds sweeping up to the far end, I couldn't ignore it and I had to go and have a look. And it turned out that the fish were all heading up this way. So I decided to get on my toes and move to the far end. And what a decision it was, as I first put the net under this stunning upper 20 mirror. And it wasn't long until I was also putting the net under this incredible common. Next in the net was this wicked 25 pound 6 ounce mirror. Followed up by a recapture of a fish called CC which I had last autumn. absolute brute of a fish. There's one known as Lipton and it goes at 43 and an 8 ounces. Couldn't be any more made up with this. Absolute monster. 
thank you very much, Lipson, for visiting me. Oh, that's an absolute chunk. Well made up of this. Coming in hours of darkness, I weren't too happy out there really, but ended up paying off. So what an absolute brute. So that wraps up my Syndicate Diaries from 2020 to 2021. I've had an amazing time fishing this water, and I'm also going to continue for the forthcoming season in search of a fish called Single Line an upper 40 that's managed to elude me from the last year. It's been an amazing lake to be a member of and I've met some amazing people along the way. If you do enjoy my channel and you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I will keep you up to date on any forthcoming videos on the way. Thank you very much.